Hey everyone, I'm Terry G. Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching my video. If you can take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it. Again, thanks a lot for stopping by. What I want to talk about today, I want to talk about doing the hard things in recovery. When I first entered recovery back in 1989, believe it or not, I don't have that much recovery. It took me about three or four years to get one year. I found it very hard and very difficult to remain sober and get recovery. I really did. I had domestic charges against me. I was unemployable. I had collectors after me. I was at the food bank. I was basically really close to living on the street. I was having a hell of a time remaining sober and having some sort of a contented free life in early recovery. And you know, I tip my hat to anybody who's trying to, th who's thinking or in early recovery, because it can be very, very difficult to get any sort of sobriety, especially at the beginning. And I remember I was sitting in a meeting, a 12 step meeting, and this old guy was there, something like me now. And he said, well, in his share, if you're willing to do the hard things in your program, you will have an easy program. You will have a great life in recovery. That's what he said. He, and, I, and I remember hanging on to that because I was pretty mixed up and confused in those days. But you do hear things that you can relate to. And that's what he said. Do the hard things in your recovery, the things that need to be done, and you will have an easy time at staying sober. And you know, he was absolutely right because there's a theory in the motivational world that says basically the same thing. If you do the hard things in your life, you will have an easy life. If you do the easy things in your life, you will have a shitty life. And that's a motivational thing uh, people say, uh, I've heard it before in there. But I heard it in 12 step programs for the first time. Basically the same thing. And what are they referring to the hard things in recovery? Well, for myself, it wasn't all, it was quite obvious what I needed to do. I was literally a basket case. I had emotional, psychological issues. I was unemployable, like I said, basically nowhere to live, no money, etc. So there was a lot of area for improvement. But when it came to my program, the hardest things for me to do was speak up for myself, share my, my views and my feelings with people. I never talked about myself or the way I felt or anything to anybody, honestly, in my whole life. I hid behind the bottle. So that was one of the things I had to do. I had to find somebody to get honest with. And I found it very difficult because a lot of times when I was being honest, I felt kind of silly or was afraid that they wouldn't like me or accept me for who I am. So I found that very difficult, but I started doing that and I started sharing in groups. I started working the program. I started working the steps, doing my, my, my fourth and my fifth. I found it very, very frightening to do that, especially the fifth step, telling people your wrongs, the people who have wronged you. You know, doing the eight in the ninth step, was also very, very difficult, but very rewarding. You know, when I did my steps in recovery and I honestly did them and I worked very hard to do them, every time I moved forward in a step, I felt a sense of ease and comfort and freedom and a sense of belonging. The miracle in recovery is doing the hard stuff, the stuff that we don't wanna do. I can't read and write. I started reading and writing in recovery. I got up and started reading the, the readings in the beginning of the meeting or start chairing a meeting and you know, doing all those kind of things that I would not normally do. And ah, it was difficult, man. It was difficult to remain sober. Being at home all alone, feeling down, feeling depressed. Life isn't that great. Life is caving in on me. You know, picking up a phone and calling somebody and saying, hey, I can't do this right now. I need some help. That takes a lot of courage. And for a lot of people, it's very difficult to do. But the rewards are tremendous when we reach out and we stop isolating and we tell people that we can't do things by ourselves. So doing the hard things in your recovery, that is where the miracles lie. Just over the hill of fear, over the hill of I don't want to do it. That's where the miracle is. We do not grow when we stay comfortable. We need to get up 
and participate in our lives. For myself, like I said, there is a lot of work to be done. When I quit drinking, I was in the restaurant industry. I was making about 45, 50,000 a year as a chef. When I was in recovery, I was lucky to get a job for minimum wage. And that took a lot of, you know, deflation to go in and work at that time was $7.25 minimum wage. I was afraid. I was, you know, I was in a place where I drank a lot in. I was in a place that I was the boss. I had to understand that this is what I need to do. And people said that to me, Terry, get a job and start, you know, being more independent financially. So I did those kind of things. Asking women out on a date being sober was a big deal, believe it or not. I was terrified of women when I was sober, but I did it. And now I'm in a loving, caring relationship. Life has a funny way of working itself out, but we have to take sobriety by the horns and we have to stop thinking that other people, places and things are gonna save us from ourselves. Going to counseling, speaking to a counselor about the trauma, childhood trauma, the fears, the abuse, things that happened to me, being honest with another person. The only re the thing about being honest with another person in counseling or in the program, then some people, they can understand you and they can help you. But if you don't wanna do that, your life could be difficult because that stuff doesn't go away. It stays with us. We learn how to hide it or we learn how to cope with it in a different way, but it doesn't go away until we deal with it. And it's hard and it's difficult. It's well worth it. It's well worth it. I have a great life now. My life is not perfect. I deal with things all the time. I still have to watch out for anger. I have to watch out for loneliness. I have to watch out for greed and fear. There's a lot of things I watch out for. But the miracle was in doing the work. The miracle was in doing the, doing the hard stuff. The stuff I didn't want to do, that's where my biggest growth in the 12-step program lied. Not sitting in my comfort zone, letting someone else do it. No, getting up there and say, I'll do it. When I didn't even know my ass from a hole in the ground, I just went and did it. It's like doing this video. I didn't feel like doing a video today, but I get off my butt and I do it because I know at the end, I will feel better. And life is like that in general, in and out of the program. We need to look after business. It could be as small as paying a phone bill or making an amends, paying off a bad debt, or going on a holiday and having some great things happen to us, some fun things happen to us, but taking responsibility for our well being. We got ourselves in there, we suffer from addiction and we can work our, work our way out of it with the help of others, but it takes courage. So remember that if you're prepared to do the hard things in your recovery, not drinking when things are really lousy is hard, but if you're prepared to do that, stick it out, hold on, you know, hold on to the rope, hold on to that knot when you think there's no other way out, but the next day will be better. Just hold on. That's hard to do, but it's well worth it because you'll get through it. If you're willing to do that, you will have contented sobriety. The miracle people will see in you, but we need to do the hard things. We need to rip the bandaid off, stand up for ourselves and take responsibility for our life. If you want to do the easy things and you want to have a melancholy life or a comfortable sobriety life and let somebody else do it or maybe I'll wait till later or maybe next year I'll get a job or next year I'll go to work on that issue. That's your decision. That's the easier, softer way. And that way has proven poor, piss poor results for a lot of people I know, but not for me. And I refuse to sit down and take this life. You know, I just get up and have a great life. I get up and I participate in my life and I participate in my sobriety because I'm responsible for myself. Things happened to me. I did things to people. As a child, as, a, as an adult, I had a terrible life at times. But it's my life. 
I have to clean up my side of the street and clean up my life. And sometimes it can be difficult. And I want that for you. I want you to have the miracle. I want you to have the happiness and freedom that you deserve, that you deserve. Alcohol has taken so much away from us. We need to stop taking things away from ourselves, from our behavior, the way we think. We need to do the hard things. Staying comfortable will just make you rot <laughs> for lesser words okay my name is terry g this is an alcohol free life channel we're learning to live silver one day at a time as you can see we got a lot of snow here it's about six inches in canadian measurements about 15 centimeters i don't think we'll be coming to the off the grid cottage much much longer because the roads uh never plowed up here but happy new year to you all i wish you all the best one day at a time, stay clean and sober, and sobriety is possible. It's very possible. And having a great life, not drinking, is very possible because I am proof. And if you look around, there's probably a lot of people around you that have been sober for a long time that can help you out or be a power of example. God bless you, thanks again. Ciao for now, I'll see you next week.